Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have decided to chop up Starship. This is not the first time I've decided to chop up Starship, but in this case it is motivated by, first of all, my pedal lander that I introduced in a previous video, at least the concept of it, and also the fact that Starship is getting rather heavy. Uh, so Pekka Starship, Pekka tries to keep it in line with the real thing as much as possible and analyze the trajectory of it from the recent flights. Uh, flight 3 and flight, flight 4, and uh, also based on Elon Musk's own comments saying that the Starship as it was could carry about 45 tons to orbit. Pekka, using the data, got it to basically do 70 to 75 tons, and that's partly because we're shutting down the sea level engines and just using the vacuum engines later on, which is not what SpaceX is doing, uh, but partly because of other things. Uh, that's unfortunately not exactly enough for me. Not to launch a 5,000 ton rocket. I don't want, you know, 70 to 75 tons to orbit. Uh, that, that would be very tedious, especially to refuel it and everything. Uh, so, well, here's the thing. I'm not going to reuse all of it. Well, I mean, well, I'll use the regular Starship occasionally, but it's a lot simpler if I just dump this part. <laughs> oh, no, no, not just that. Uh, not just the engine, but all of this. Uh, the tanks, and in this case, four Raptor vacuum engines. I think that would be better. Uh, at least, that's the theory. And then I could land this. Now, part of this is also motivated by the fact that I can't land the starship, the tall starship, on like the moon or Mars or anywhere as it is, I'll almost certainly tip it over. I would need really enormous landing legs to avoid tipping it over. So, for my own purposes, I need something not so tall. And in order to get the payload capacity that they need, they seem to be wanting to stretch Starship even longer, add nine engines to it, and stretch uh, Super Heavy a little bit more too. But, you know, uh, I said 70 to 75 tons, but now they're adding a blader to it, and then they're also making double strength tiles, which is just going to add more mass. And the payload capacity is going to end up lower than Falcon Heavy at this rate. But of course it has more volume at least, I think. Though they haven't built the payload, the cargo bay door for the big payloads. So I don't know about that. So, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what the state of all that is, but I, I'm, not, I'm not thrilled with it. So I'm doing my own thing as usual. Uh, so what we have here is a lander. And we have a 100 ton tank of clean water. Uh, I, I'm told that 100 tons is what they're aiming for. So here, this is a lander that has 100 tons of payload in it. And we have not, not any engines at the bottom. We have these nozzles here. And all together, they are providing 1,423 kilonewtons divided across eight engines. So that should be quite doable. I mean, we're talking about each one, each thruster is less than 200 kilonewtons in vacuum. Uh, they can throttle, of course. I would think uh, Super Draco's just with methane and oxygen. And this also has flaps like that. So that's to help make sure that the center of lift is further this away. <laughs> because with a payload here, and, you know, the fuel here, we're otherwise going to be toppling all over the place, but this is still something I have to test, right? So, we have th these little things as our landing legs, and we have those flaps, and that's the idea. But the reason why we have the legs like this is because there's also the pedal lander that this might be connecting with, and the pedal lander will just sort of dock inside here. That's why this is hollow here. So we'll dock inside there, and then the crew can transfer from whatever habitat we have here into the pedal lander down there, and this will all this will actually facilitate the landing of that pedal lander. So that's the idea of that. As you can see, we've got 1,720 meters per second, which should be enough to slow down around Mars. Uh, I've got parachutes on top, and then land. And that's with the 100 tons. Without the 100 tons, this has 3,928 meters per second. So without any payload in there, if they strip it all out, this could potentially get back into orbit around Mars, especially if we have 
an, an additional tank here. If we could strap on an additional tank, maybe have some crew capacity up front. Uh, so there'll be additional payload. Uh, we're not dumping all the payload, but if we have an additional tank here, uh, I think we can probably make it to orbit around Mars if we want this to be an ascent vehicle as well. So that's a consideration if we do want it back. But there's a lot of testing that has to go on to make this work. And I would like to see if it can actually land on Mars. There's also the question of whether Super Heavy can actually launch it. That would be a good thing to figure out too. But we are carrying the 100 tons there. So I don't know. As you can see, this is not telling me the truth about the Delta V, and that is because of the hot staging arrangement. Probably I can rearrange it and maybe figure it out, but I'm not sure. We do have the benefit of using straight vacuum engines with the center one gimbling. We have the downside that the thrust weight ratio of Starship is now going to be 0.64 when we start out because we only have four engines and we are actually carrying a pretty heavy payload at the top. So the first thing is, let's see if it can launch to orbit in this configuration. Now you'll notice the lander doesn't have any heat tiles or anything like that. Maybe we'll need some heat tiles, but generally entering into Mars's atmosphere doesn't require a whole lot of heat protection. It really just needs a lot more surface area. So what we're going for with the lander is surface area. And if we need heat protection in certain locations, I'll add that. But this is certainly going to be less than what they're doing to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is much more intense. Uh, the velocities are like well, I wouldn't say double, but uh, the scaling of temperature with velocity is uh, exponential. So, um, yeah, it's it's a lot and a lot of extra heat for Earth compared to Mars. And really for Mars, you just need more surface area. So I think the steel might be good enough to deal with it. We'll see. I don't know if the hot staging will work right, but I'm just going to try and run the script per normal. And we will have Super Heavy try and reserve fuel and come back and do all that business. We're reusing Super Heavy. It's just that part of Starship we're not reusing. And when you think about it, I mean, it's a tank, which they made it out of steel because steel was cheap. And then there's Raptors, but Raptors are supposed to be cheap, right? So we don't have fins, that makes it easier and lighter too. Uh, the dry mass of the upper portion is set at 35.5 tons right now. That's without the payload, obviously. But with the little engines, though all eight of those engines combined do not produce the thrust of a single Raptor, so... They are set to 360 seconds of ISP. That's their efficiency. Yeah, I've been told that the Raptors are like a million dollars a pop, so for a Mars landing, Dumping that tank and four of them shouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But, you know, a little bit sad. Okay, off it goes. The script is just doing what it would for a normal Starship launch, so that's the question whether I need to modify that or not for this sort of thing. Still, for a transfer to... Mars or something like that, we would need this tank to be partially refilled at, at least. This is not right. It, uh, it's almost certainly getting more Delta V than it's reading here, but... After transfer to Mars, we're relying on the lander's 1,700 meters per second to do any other corrections that are necessary. Um, it'll use aero capturing, but possibly a little bit of propellant for the capture and then come down. And then if it needs to ascend again, as long as we remove the payload and uh, get some other tank in, or maybe we'll already have the other tank in just empty initially and then fill it up with in situ resocialization and the payload can go further at the top, depending on how much volume the payload needs. Um, with the refueling, it can make orbit again. I might even think about overfueling it on the way up so that it can come back down again with some additional payload, but, but that wouldn't be a hundred tons. That's not possible. Unless 
it gets refueled when it's in orbit around Mars. But it's possible... Oh, we got some clipping over there. This it's one oh it didn't like that one. Like, you have a gimbling engine, use it. It doesn't gimbal much though. So five thousand eight hundred meters per second. It's pretty tight. It might be that this will have to complete orbit on its own. But that's not doable because then we can't have this stage transfer us. And we would like that stage to transfer us. But we don't have enough time to apoapsis to burn through all this. The options are either I lighten the load and make it not 100 tons. We could. I don't think we could send up the load separately. But we could underfuel this is what the propellant it has right now. And if we underfuel it, then maybe it can make it there, but then we're cutting into what we can use later on. But we might have to. I mean, it looks like we do. But yeah, this is just my own solution because I need one. I'm, I'm not saying SpaceX should do this. It's gonna be real interesting to see what they do with this 5,000 ton rocket. Okay. We are still quite a ways off. Let me revert this and we can underfuel the lander. For a landing on Mars, I would like more, especially because I don't think we're going to get that much drag from the flaps. I don't think FAR really cares about the flaps that I put on very much and we don't have a lot of surface area. That's the one good thing about the full Starship. It's very empty and has a lot of surface area. We're not going to have much surface area. Uh, unless it actually sees these flaps and I'm not sure it's gonna actually consider the flaps in terms of drag so that's a pickle uh, and we could probably do with even more surface area so it would be helpful to have a lot of fuel because the more fuel we have the more we can slow down even if it doesn't see all the surface area but let me just underfuel it like that and lock that so it doesn't replenish it. Uh, I'll keep the 100 tons and let's see if we can get it up to orbit like this. If not, we'll have to scale back on the 100 tons of payload. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see. Where did Super Heavy go anyway? Oh, there it is. Oh, that engine's still on. Okay, still very tight here as we're more than halfway through, but it's possible that'll make it. It's possible. <laughs> uh. Uh, I think it's a little bit too too low on delta V. I mean, we have two choices: either I reduce the payload, or we throw away three sea levels instead of one vacuum. Then this doesn't even have the tiles and everything. Okay, yeah, I didn't make orbit. But it has to keep a very high pitch because of thrust weight ratio. So alright, we'll go with the standard configuration and toss three sea level engines on. Alright, and off it goes. Spray got piled on. Okay, staging time. Okay, now it ignited everything. Sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. Let's get the RCS on. Up 
that we're guaranteed to need RCS. We'll see how the sea levels do and what I should be able to switch some of them off. Okay, I've switched off the sea levels. And the RCS is puffing away. Nah, this is definitely worse, even though I've shut off the sea levels. Uh, we are gonna fall further short, I believe. Though our apoapsis is higher, so maybe we could aim a little bit lower than we have here. But, yeah, I might have to aim for something less than 100 tons, which isn't so much of a surprise. This is still fundamentally Starship, it just doesn't have the fins or the heat shielding. Whether that all amounts to 30 tons of payload capacity, that's unlikely. Right, because that's the difference between the 70 to 75 tons we would get with the regular Starship and this setup. So yeah, as we fall short, I think next time I'll just test the Mars entry aspect of things, whether the lander can actually land on Mars, which will probably pose other problems and then decide on adjustments because that will also require some adjustments probably and maybe that will also suggest that we can't carry 100 tons but should probably aim for something like 80 tons incidentally uh, with the little legs that I have here if I extend the flaps uh, it is meant to be the case that these have elevators going down and so I've, that's why I placed the uh, engines where they are and the tanks do not block that way. It's close, uh, but it's, it's just a little bit off. Maybe if I... oh darn it, I didn't stop it in time. Um, maybe... oh, it, uh, it for some reason doesn't have... what is it? Why, why do we not have colliders? I have, cl I have colliders. It might not have colliders at the top there, though. Anyway, uh, I'll have to look into the colliders on that thing. But, okay, uh, hmm. <laughs> right. Well, I have colliders. Get off of me. But I don't seem to have electric charge on here for some reason. It got rid of my electric charge. Realism overhaul sometimes does that. So I'll have to make sure that this has electric charge and keeps electric charge. Its RO configuration does have electric charge, but uh, RO likes to get rid of electric charge on things that have modular fuel tanks sometimes. Anyway, fixes will be made. Tell me what you think of the idea. Uh, it's bound to be controversial, but for now, Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.